Good Friday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, I know you just spoke to Mick Mulvaney yeah, on that CNBC. Was, that was Mick, that was fun. I mean, he called him. Didn't he really expect him? I was hoping that that uh, Anthony Scaramucci would call in, uh, but you can't have everything, you know. You, the world is not perfect. Uh, I think that they're going to go down the wrong path. Uh, First, David was right, they need a budget resolution. That's what they should focus on first. Second, because the House took away the border tax, the House is not going to let anything occur that actually costs the taxpayer money. It's going to have to be revenue neutral. If it's going to have to be revenue neutral, then it can't be done. You can't do it, which is why I suggested to Mick that what, let's just get repatriation on. With the exception of the president, I think I speak to more CEOs because that's my job. I just speak to CEOs and I speak to hundreds of CEOs. And many are anxious to get that money from abroad, which is just sitting there doing nothing. Yes, some of it will be used to buy back stock, but a lot of it will be used to be able to expand because we actually have genuine expansion issues here in the country that demand needs to be met. So I think that they're going down the wrong path again. Anything comprehensive cannot be done without Democrats and Republicans, and they don't have either if they try to bust the budget. Well, one CEO you just spoke to was Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson. Yeah, now Kevin, uh, we own this Fraction Alerts. Uh, it's back to our basis. We did sell some at 64, uh, and so we had thought that maybe we would buy that back. Uh, we said that we'd buy it back if it really got hit, but frankly, uh, there was enough uncertainty in my interview with him to not embolden me to buy back stock, but buy back what we sold. And the reason for that, as we say in our many comprehensive notes on it, is because they probably have to guide down next quarter. Uh, and because remember next quarter, and he actually, Kevin said this, they're, just, they're trying to figure out what they're going to say for next year right now. If you think they're going to guide down fiscal uh, 2018, then this stock can probably go to, to, to 50. Uh, that's disconcerting. The stock has done nothing in two years. It's been a core holding of mine since Howard came back. I don't want to draw the conclusion because Howard's not there, because he is there, executive chairman, that therefore the stock has become a third rail of consumer packaged goods and of, uh, of QSR. But right now there's enough uncertainty that, that I find it uh, not inspiring, and, and not inspiring doesn't make me want to reach for the stock. What did you make of Western Digital's quarter? Well, Western Digital, we have a very comprehensive note out to uh, to all of our people, and I just prefer that they read that note. Totally. All right. Now, Amazon had a miss, but Jim, as you said right here the other day, this is a world domination story, not an earnings story. Yeah, no, Amazon, there are two components to Amazon. There's the retail, and I think a lot of people were surprised that retail didn't do better, given the fact that there was, for an earnings basis, given the fact there was Amazon Prime, but instead they plowed back the money. They're very opaque in the conference call. And then there's wonders about whether well, there's margin pressure at Amazon Web Services as Azure from Microsoft and the uh, cloud business from Alphabet speed up. I think there's still so much demand going to the cloud that there may not be margin pressure, but I'm certainly watching it. Does this make me not want to buy Amazon? No, it just makes me want to be more price sensitive. Jim, we also had earnings from Chevron and ExxonMobil. Chevron had a very good quarter, and it shows you how much money you can make. Chevron, by the way, had, uh, this is the fruits of the labor of, of what they did after Macondo. Remember, they drilled once it was, you got the, free, once you got the go-ahead from Macondo, they gr drilled, and they've hit pay dirt, and those, those wells are producing at a very good price. Uh, Exxon, I think Exxon, is still trying to figure out there. They're not going to be Royal Dutch saying longer for lower forever. But it, Exxon was a bit of a disappointment simply because as oil comes down, Exxon has been so good at handling that. Chevron was the star in this case. All right. And what about American Airlines this quarter? American Airlines was a good quarter, uh, but the airlines are in sell mode. Uh, and I think that you've got to wait for the selling to be done as people feel that the airline group has become once again murderous to each other. Spirit yesterday was very bad. We have uh, Southwest, similar to what I said about Starbucks, we sold some Southwest higher and we will buy that back when it comes in. Southwest didn't make its quarter because of some very bad oil hedges that are, that are coming off. Gary Kelly came on and I interviewed him yesterday on Squawk in the Street. And again, I mean, somewhat like Kevin Johnson, it was not as inspiring as I would like. Kevin Johnson being the CEO of Starbucks. But I do feel that Southwest represents value and I like it when we sell some at 64 to be able to buy some back perhaps, you know, sell some in the 60s, buy some back in the 50s. But again, price sensitivity is not a mistake here.
All right, what about Merck's quarter? Merck was good. Uh, Merck is benefiting from Keytruda, which has been clear winner over Bristol Myers. We prefer Lilly, because Lilly has, I think, a better product portfolio. I know Lilly, people were stunned by their arthritis failure. It was not a true failure. I think they'll be back. They are a consistent company, great balance sheet. They did boost their forecast. Lilly is preferable to Merck. And Jim, Tesla Model 3 deliveries start today. Yeah, I mean, Tesla's a cold stock. I've said that many times to you, Scott. You yes. can always talk about Tesla, and I'm always going to say it's a cold stock. Absolutely. All right, Jim Kramer, thank you so much thank as always. You. Have a great weekend. For more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio, please head to actionalertsplus.com.